Good morning, brothers and sisters. Here we are yet again, first Sunday in February, the year of 2021. Um, celebrating just another opportunity to come before you and pray that God's favor is still shining upon you and that you're staying safe in the midst of this uh, pandemic. We bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and hoping that uh, God gives you the peace that surpasses all understanding and help us endure things um, that we must endure. With February being uh, the love month, where we recognize uh, loved uh, and our loved ones, I want to bring to our attention a very familiar passage of scripture that speaks to the essence of love uh, that can be uh, found from Genesis to Revelations is the foundation of why we even exist, why we're even here. Um, and it is uh, John 3.16, very, very familiar passage of scripture and one that speaks to the essence of our being. Uh, when it reads, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever shall believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I want to just talk just for about 7 minutes and 35 seconds that it's a love thing. Amen. It's a love thing. When we get ready in this month to celebrate Valentine's Day and we want to shatter or share with our, our significant others, um, love tokens, flowers, and candies, and dinners. Um, let us not forget who our first love is. Amen. Our first love is Jesus Christ. Amen. Because when I was yet a sinner, Christ died for me. In other words, Christ loved me before I even loved him. Um, Christ chose me before I even chose him. Um, Christ had a desire for me before I even had a desire for him. Um, and his love speaks to our essence. Amen. It was love that woke me up this morning. It was love that shook my bed and said, rise and see another day. It was a love thing. Um, walk with me here through this text. Jesus, while having a conversation uh, with a man by the name of Nicodemus. And Nicodemus was trying to figure out, Lord, what can I do to inherit eternal life? Um, I, I want to be a person who has a, a, a life after this in your presence. And Jesus was trying to illustrate with him, man, you, you must be born again. Um, you're, you're not going to make it into the kingdom in the style of which you are right now. You're not going to walk in the kingdom with fleshly hands. Uh, you're going to be transformed. You're going to be changed. Uh, but So you're going to have to be born again. Nicodemus is trying to understand, Lord, how can I be born again? I mean, I can't go back into my mother's womb. What, 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 how can I be born again and Jesus was illustrating to him that it is not a fleshly rebirth it is a spiritual rebirth and because of the 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 weight of your spirit because I long for your spirit because I want you to achieve eternal greatness I must offer you eternal salvation and God in his infinite wisdom tells us that I, uh, because the penalty of death is so great, because of the responsibility for your soul has so much significance to me, there's only one way you're going to make it into glory. And that's through my son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ says, the only thing that's going to keep me fulfilling my, my father's assignment is my love for you. For God so loved the world that he would give his only begotten son. How important it is for us to understand that I'm not going to reach salvation because I am living a good life. 
you can give all your money to the poor. You can go out and do all charitable work you can think of and be just this great and good person. But if you do not accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, all you've done was live a good life on this side. But we must have to invest on our life on the other side. There is life after death. And the only way we're going to achieve greatness is through Jesus Christ. He tells Nicodemus here that this love that I have for you is going to cost me my own life as a ransom for yours. And what he was really telling us in this passage of scripture was foretelling us of the death that he was going to have to face in order to pay the price for our soul. He tells him that, that like the, the serpent that Moses lifted up that saved lives, that everyone that looked upon it, lives were saved, the same thing was going to happen. He tells them that if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. So Jesus was proclaiming to them that I'm going to die and I'm going to die on the cross. They're going to nail my hands to the cross. They're going to strap me to this cross. And if they leave me on the ground, that will be fine. But oh, if they lift me up, I'm going to draw all men unto me. You see, it wasn't the nails that held him to the cross. It was love. It wasn't the, the, the people down there mocking him that didn't make him come down, it was love. It was his love for us that he was going to die for our sins. Happy Valentine's Day to Jesus, because he is our first love. God bless you.